Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yep, trying to make it work, too. I'm not trying. I'm, 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 I'm getting it. I'm getting it done to the best of my abilities. Now, something funny my father taught me. He says, son, when you've done all you can do, if you've done your absolute best, and you look up, and it didn't get the job done, take a deep breath and do some more. <laughs> that used to bug me, man, when my father used to tell me, they used to son, when you've done your absolute best and you think you can't do no more, you've done all you can, and it still don't get the job done, take yourself a deep breath and do some more. And you know what? I found that has worked every single time. Every single time. Because what my father knew was that what you think is your breaking point or what you think is your all in all, he says, son, it's just something about it, man. If you just gather yourself, you got a little bit more. Everybody got some more. And, I, you know, I, I got to be honest with you, it has worked. It has helped me greatly. And, um, you know, it everybody does have some more. You know, I tell that to my sons all the time. With that, I did my best. Well, let me ask you something else. Could you have done anything else? Could you have studied a little harder? Could you have shown up a little bit earlier? Could you stayed a little bit later? Yeah. Well, then, okay, that's what you should have done then. See, there's always a way. But if you're going to create excuses, if you're going to make them up all the time about why you don't get it done, I have a very, very sad uh, 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 statement for you right now. You're never going to get anything done. You're never going to get to the top. Not to the top. You can get halfway up. Now, you can get a third of the way up. You can get three quarters of the way up. But if you don't have that little extra reserve in you, you're not getting to the top. The top is only reserved for those that have the wherewithal and the power, the desire, the drive, and the gut-wrenching effort to get to the top. The top is reserved only for the top. It's just the top. There ain't but one top. The middle done ain't it. You know, the top, the top of the mountain, 
halfway, it's a different view at the top. Things look different from up top. So if you want to get to the top of whatever, your profession, your field, your career, whatever it is, you got to do extra. You have to do more. More is expected of you. More, but here's what's really crazy. More is required of you. Don't live your life in a lackadaisical state. Don't wake up every day with the feeling of, uh, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. No, man, have a say-so in your life. You, first of all, let me ask you something. Who has God? Name the person that, ha- that God has given authority over you. Name the person. But who is the person? Nobody has domain over you. God didn't create that person. So what you sitting here for, man? What are you sitting here for? Letting people who do not know direct your path. Why are you worried about all these people with what they got to say about you and all these people with what they got to think about you when here's the news flash? They don't know either. All these people that you overly concerned about, all these people that you go into these answers for, they need answers too. Stop. What are you doing here? Gather yourself for a minute. Here is a solution to all of that. You have one source that will be there for you to the end of time, and that is your relationship with God. That is the one thing that's solid and for sure. He's behind the wall. He's in your jail cell. He rides with you in the police car. He's with you on your job up at the school. He's down there in the board meetings with you. He goes with you when you travel on planes. He sits with you when you're in a relationship. He helps you with your parenting skills. He helps you. He's there to assist you. He show If you do the right things, he show you and guide you to your next job. When you lose your job and you think it's a wrap, all, there's some good behind it, man. God is always working on your behalf to those that believe. You just got to believe. He don't ask you for nothing else. Believe in me. That's all he asks you to do. What you tripping for, man? And then when you make the decision to believe in him and it comes out your mouth from time to time somewhere, what you worried about what people say? What you worried about what they think for? Why? Who are they? They need God too. You, 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 you telling them you found something new that you're going to give this a shot right here. Now they got some yin, yin yang and some yakety yak to say about that. When they need God, too. That's what amazes me, man, about people. Sit up in here, man, be knocking your dream and stuff. Look, if you're an atheist, man, do your thing. Do your thing. But you can't create no laws where I can't do mine. That don't make no sense, man. That makes no sense at all to me. You have the right to go be whatever you want to be. You know, if you don't you don't like the fact that I'm in school, got my head bowed down, and I'm saying a prayer before I take this test, just don't bow your head, don't you pray. But if some kids want to get together, that, that's some crazy mess. That's what happened in our schools. We took prayer out of schools. Now look at our schools. You send your child to school, and, and, and someone else comes back home. That's a whole other thing right here. I, that, that, that's not what I want to talk to you about. But I was just throwing it out because, you know, Hey, man, your relationship with God is essential to your success as a person. It's essential to your existence. It's essential to where you're trying to go and what you're trying to be because he made you. Why would you not talk to the person that made you to find out what he created you for? I ain't talking about your parents. Who made your parents? This is God. We created in his image. Why would you not talk to your maker to see why you got made? That, 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 don't, that don't make sense to you? If you're sitting and gotten yourself in a situation, you sitting in a jail cell somewhere, you locked up, you doing some time, man, be a good time for you to reflect. But whatever your situation is, man, God can get you through it. He can give you the strength, the courage, the wherewithal, the understanding, everything you need, the wisdom to get you through anything you're going through. You just got to touch base with him. I need God. Every single day of my life. And what he's done for me, man, off the chain. But guess what? He'll do the same thing for you. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. One time I said it, two times I meant it, three times I heard it, come out your mouth. I said, good morning, y'all. Good morning, everybody. What you want to do different today? That right there made no damn sense at all. And I love it. But yeah. that That's right the there, man, is how I woke up this morning. I was kind of all over the place. Mm-mm. Then I gathered myself. I asked the Holy Spirit to come sit with me, straighten me out. Just, just I need you today. I'm feeling out of sorts. Touch me, work with me. I came on in here, and this is what he gave me. <laughs> I feel better already. All right. Yeah. God works in mysterious ways. Your Don't. normal ain't my normal. Come Your on. regular ain't my regular. Your happy might not be my happy. Hello. The way I set it off might be completely different than the way you set it off. Yeah. Huh. Because when I set it off, I set the building on fire. As you should. Yeah. yeah. That's my should. set it off. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah. I ain't no little, I like a, I strike, strike a match in the corner, no. burn uh-huh. the garbage can. No, no. <laughs> I am where the slogan originated. Come on, boy. The roof, the Ooh. roof. Yeah. The roof is on fire. Uh-huh. We don't need no water. Take your time. Let Careful. this uh-huh. oh. burn. Oh. Yes. Burn. Yes. Yes. Burn. Mm. Who was there that <laughs> night? Who was there that the night blind. they did that? Man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm the originator of that. <laughs> you did. I, I, I feel that way. <laughs> when I heard it, man, it was like uh it was, was it almost that slow. When you it was it. almost spiritual when I heard it. Well, I'm saying <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> spiritual? You had a, like a an dog. out-of-body experience? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was one of them moments right there when I heard it. I went, man, what? is they talking about me? <laughs> Lord have mercy. I have uh, 74. 74? Okay. 74. <laughs> 74 is when it really hit me that the roof was on fire. (laughs) And the request to not anybody bring water. Yeah. 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 Because I was comfortable with it burning. I was Mm -hmm. seven. (laughs) I wasn't even here. I was seven. You wasn't even, Junior, you was at 74. Man, my parents ain't even met. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> wasn't no way Helbert. for me to get here yeah Delbert was out doing other things <laughs> yeah Delbert Lee 74 Delbert. boy hey man 74 Delbert was probably breaking in cars yeah <laughs> all man. right listen coming up in 32 minutes after the hour the pastor and the deacon are in the building for church complaints right after this you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is Monday. The deacon is back. Yeah. Reverend Motown is here, and it is time for church complaints. What you got? We, uh, uh, uh. we, we've been missing. We've yes. conchulated mm. you didn't on the auspicity mm. uh. of direction. That boy still got some wisdom. Lord, have mercy. We've been uh, hoping and praying for our deacon's monocolical return. Yeah. What? We we have been in waiting uh, and strong artification (laughs) that one day he would persify. Mm, I've been missing the word. Indemnify. And objectify Um, our presence with his own aura. Mm. Mm. Hell, today we have been bionotically blessed. Mm. 
knowing that him and only himself Mm. could Mm. be as spontaneity (laughs) and bless us with this benign. Hmm. Oh. Maybe that's I like not benign. A good word. No, don't it's you. not a good word, but that's all right. That's all right. Oh, but benign <laughs> would be a cancel reference, and we don't want to use that <laughs> word. But it had well, you already didn't did it. You uh, didn't already did it. Well, subconsciously, it has slipped in. Mm-hmm. As mm-hmm. we, <laughs> as we, let me see how I can avoid the pitfalls of this he tried, introduction. He's trying to clean it up. Damage yeah. control. Let's see <laughs> now. I hope as you fix it. We let me therapeutically. Let me what? Uh-huh. Therapeutically. Uh, uh-huh. Therapeutically. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Fix it. Get through this dialysis. Oh, oh Lord. Of a I'm not on. I'm not on that. Crisis. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with my kitty. Bless us. Bless us chemotherapy. Oh no. Oh no. I had to. I'm, I'm missing that part. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we prayed that out. That's no longer. We prayed that away. We're not involved in that, ladies and gentlemen, Deacon Def Jam. All right, all right. Coming from a hydrocodone perspective here. Uh, what? Go oh, ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Percocet, if you will. Oh, no. Percocet. Come on. Yes. All oh, right, we got an issue here. Uh, we got a message from heaven that uh, Aretha Franklin is highly upset that Queen Elizabeth funeral outdid her. And he, he wants a do-over, and here are the stops that she wants to make. Uh, her hometown, Memphis. Then she wants to go to Buffalo, New York. She wants us to roll her up to the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles. Then Carnegie Hall. And then lastly, back to Detroit. So she wants her funeral redone, Pastor. What? We're not going to be able to do that for Queen no. because of... I don't know if she's aware, but if she were to show up and make an appearance at any of these, uh, all these buildings would immediately clear out. Most of Aretha's friends is not white. And we don't ever have our fans come back. You know, white folks has been seeing Elvis since he left. You've never heard one of us say, man, I was down at the mall last week and I saw Marvin Gaye. <laughs> I venture to say that that entire mall would be closed down. Yeah. What are we doing? So oh, we yes. won't be doing a redo of our Queen of Souls funeral. Yeah. All right. We don't have to tell her no. I think the Lord going to shut that down. <laughs> All right. He must have wrote these while he was in the hospital. I he, did. He did. I you did. can tell they have very yeah. little thought or care behind it. Uh-uh. Back, all right, now. Nobody. Nobody. And here go another. The and first go one another. was about death. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and you're not hurting. There ain't nobody hurting my feelings, and I'm going to keep right on going with what I wrote. <laughs> um, Sister Deborah Sattler made a mac and cheese with stool softener on Saturday for the fundraiser. Oh, everything what? is about oh, what? And yeah, the entire church. sanctuary needs to be clean and sanitized. It's going to cost $1,500 for the cleaners, and the congregation wants to make sure that she pays for it. It's your call, Pastor. It's this a mac and your... cheese stool softener. It's what it was. Yeah, we, we, this is your last time going into the hospital. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your, your hospital stays in writing as a... We've done a funeral, the return of the queen, and the stool, stool softener. I'll, I'll make sure that I tie the next one in together for yes. you. Let's just move on. All right. Let's see if I can get something. This, um, you got cheese and stools. Yes. Doesn't go together. How does that work? <laughs> Sound like a morphine conversation. <laughs> <laughs> he was, oh, uh, he the, deed, uh, the deed to the church and all of our important paperwork and some cash is missing from the church oh, office. What? Now, Brother Mason, I... Our bookkeeper says uh, he's 100% sure probably that all of our stuff is in uh, Mar-a-Lago, along with other classified <laughs> <laughs> He say Trump has our stuff. 
And he wants everybody to ride with him to Florida to get it from uh, from Trump. That's up to you, Pastor. But all that I'm stuff assuming is in my life. that you were thinking of this while writing your will. <laughs> <laughs> so what we going to do with things that we have no concern? This boy's mind was, he was in the hospital as the ghetto boys. My mind is playing tricks on me. <laughs> we <laughs> venture. He was five uh, he was Oh, I was dropping bees <laughs> on me. You was having fifth ward nightmare. <laughs> uh, one more thing, Pastor. Uh, R. What? Kelly is asking to have a uh, family feud come to the prison. He wants D block oh. against A block. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was All right. gone. He was, he was yeah, gone. He was high. gone. Yeah, he was. Yes, you really was. Ooh, let's move on. You Ooh. was all uh, up in your bed, pan right knees here. <laughs> Coming up next, <laughs> it is Ask the CLO Chief uh, Love Officer Steve Harvey. Right after this, man, thank you. you need to- You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, we have info on how you can help victims of Hurricane Ian and viral videos show former NFL star Antonio Brown during uh, doing lewd acts in a hotel swimming pool in Dubai and Trevor Noah has announced that he's leaving the Daily Show no. we'll talk about all these oh, stories man. yeah yeah at the top of the hour we love him on that show but right now it is time to ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey Geraldine and Henderson says, uh, I'm a 33 year old teacher and one of my students is my cousin's husband's baby. It was just a rumor until the child was registered for school this year and ended up in my pre-K class. He looks just like his daddy. Should I tell my cousin? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. 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 Come on, see y'all. What you going Well, <laughs> I think now, is she, let me ask you this though, question. Is uh-huh. she saying that the lady don't know? Well, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, the that she does not know. know. Yeah. The cousin, her cousin doesn't know that this is her cousin husband's baby. The little boy. I don't, I think you should leave child. that alone. <gasps> mm. That and ain't not tell- Uh-huh. The baby, the baby's at school to get education. You're the teacher. Mm-hmm. Teach, the, teach. Baby. It teach ain't your, the baby. It ain't your husband. And no, because you're going to mess up the little baby's education. Now, you don't want the baby to know nothing. You sitting over here playing the baby short because you think the baby, <laughs> the baby created a breakup. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't, don't t- your test F. <laughs> don't take it out on the baby. Come on now. She's not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, Carolyn. yes, she is. She's going to take it out on the baby. <laughs> Lead us along. Let that baby grades be the grades. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Wow. Whew. Okay. That's a tough one right there. Okay. Moving on to Clarissa in Edgewater. Clarissa writes, I work overnights in a hospital and a few years ago I had an affair with a coworker. He was single and I was married. Now he's married and I'm divorced and I flirted with him because I needed sex. He says he's happily married and he's not a cheater. Is he just not interested in me anymore or what? He's what happily hospital? married, and he's not a cheater. Mm. That what what what? <laughs> See, yeah. when you did it before, he he done met the chick of his dreams. He don't want you. It's okay. Bottom line. Move on. Just because you did it, don't mean he got to do it. Some limits mm-hmm. to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Layer. Yep. Yeah. Just so y'all know, though, they be doing it in the hospital. In case y'all didn't know, they be doing it. <laughs> Your hospital updates. <laughs> <laughs> you oversharing. They do. <laughs> so, I so see I can hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't talk, though, Tommy. You couldn't talk. Couldn't but talk, but I can hear. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, moving on, CLO, to Belinda and Gary. Belinda says, I've been dating a man for four months and I can't visit his home because of my allergies. He bought the home from a lady that had cats and he refuses to get new carpet. I'm thinking maybe he can't afford it. Should I offer to loan him the money? What? 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 (laughs) Yeah. He desperate. So you got it? 
four months she's you been dating this guy. You can't come over his house because mm-hmm. uh, the woman had cats. Right. And you allergic. Right. Now, he done found so, a way to keep you out of his house legitimately. Because uh-huh. mm-hmm. if I want a woman bad enough, it's, I'm finna get these walls painted, fumigated, yeah. and the rug up out here. We finna have hardwood floors. <laughs> right. Period. Right. Point oh, blank, no, period. For real. He don't we want to get this carpet right. out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know, should I loan him the money? What? Yeah. He ain't asked you for that. He, he ain't mm-hmm. trying to change the carpet. He don't want you over there. Because he got some, he got some people over there that ain't allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm-mm. But if you go to the hospital, they can fix them allergies. They fix everything at the hospital. I'm just <laughs> Another <laughs> hospital update. Another <laughs> random hospital update. So what have we learned today so far? <laughs> Girl, too much. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your health together. Hey, man, your ass ain't going to the hospital no more. <laughs> 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 Now that you can talk, you're letting us know what's going down in the hospital. <laughs> Shout out to the healthcare workers. Sorry. Yes, yes. Big front ups line, to all the nurses, line. doctors, everybody, orderly, everybody. Come on. <laughs> all right, oh, so definitely don't loan him the money you're saying, CLO. Loan him the money? He didn't ask you for no money, for no rug. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Why don't you read the writing on the wall? <laughs> Move on. He ain't ready for you to come over there regularly. You just been dating four months. He ain't cleared the stable out. Okay. Did Hope you hear me? It. He hasn't cleared the stable mm. out. We got, it. got yeah. it. Y'all women uh-huh. talk, y'all dating these men like they ain't had no history before you showed up. In four months, you can come out of your pocket giving him money? Ugh. All right. Ooh. Moving on. Last one, Steve. Last one. This is from Joy in your hometown of Cleveland. Uh, Joy says, I found out that my husband of 12 years put a locator on my cell phone after he caught me in a lie about where I had been. I told him that I was at a coffee shop, but I was at a boutique instead. Um, He made a big deal over nothing. And the bigger question is why he's tracking me after 12 years of marriage. What's up? Because he thinks you cheat. Because she lied. Period. Huh, Listen Steve? to me. Mm-hmm. The boutique was the truth. Mm-hmm. You chose the lie. And why did you tell the lie? Because you didn't want him to know he was spend you were spending money at the boutique. Right. You see what I say about lying? <laughs> what? What's your what point? You what you saying? The lie. She shouldn't have lied in this case. No, 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 no. You lied for the reason. You didn't want him to know you were spending money at the boutique. Right, so you right. told him you was at a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. He went, that's a damn lie. You at a boutique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are See? you saying? She, you, she I appreciate have, what, you lied because you was oh, trying to oh, hide the fact oh. about the money. <laughs> the appreciation mm-hmm. for but the now, lie. Know this but about the lie. The lie uh-huh. requires another lie. And you're yes. not good at Always. it. Always, yeah. Always. I, yeah. on the other hand, have, I, I, I quadruple lie. I pack lie. Okay, <laughs> so what would lie. you have done? What would you have done in this scenario, Steve? Baby, mm-hmm. the boutique mm-hmm. is right there by the coffee shop. There you go. Come on, boy. <laughs> right next door. And so I, I went over to the boutique, but mm-hmm. I went next door to get some coffee. Oh, so you were in and out in the boutique. Uh-huh. So I did go get some coffee, and you can ask them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ask them. Oh, we got witnesses. <laughs> Man, you tripping. <laughs> so flip it. She can flip it. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hurricane Ian is notably one of the strongest hurricanes to ever hit the U.S., claiming lives along its path of 
devastation and destruction. Hurricane Ian, Ian weakened Saturday as it rolled into the mid-Atlantic states, but not before it washed out bridges, slung massive boats into buildings, and took roofs off of homes, leaving millions of people without power. And here are some of the ways, if you'd like to, you can help. If you want to uh, volunteer, go to the Red Cross website at redcross.org slash volunteer today, or you can donate at 800 Red Cross. That's 800 by the numbers, 800-733-2767, or go to redcross.org. All right, redcross.org. And we're still praying for those victims of Hurricane Ian. I mean, this thing here was massive. This was yeah, massive. it yeah. really was. It, it really was, was, was. a monster storm left mm-hmm. left some areas unrecognizable. Yeah, you see the before and right. after pictures versus the you know, after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they showed mm-hmm. it on Google Docs on the different mm-hmm. news networks, it, yeah. it's just horrible. Damaging winds and man. Yeah. And we're hoping this is the the last of the hurricanes. Yeah. Definitely keep them in our prayers for sure. Um, Yeah. Now switching gears here. This is a crazy story right here. Antonio Brown um, has um, exhibited more bizarre behavior. And this time he was in Dubai. Uh, Videos of Antonio Brown at a swimming pool at a hotel in Dubai has been circulating on social media over the weekend. The incident reportedly happened back in May and the videos have just been released. In the video, A.B. toots his butt up out of the water in a woman's face while other hotel guests watched him and recorded him. In another video, A.B. appears to tie a scarf uh, that he took from another guest around a woman's head and when she snatches it off, he picks her up and throws her into the pool. He then leans on the edge of the pool to poke his penis out of the water and wave what? it in the air. Yeah, excuse me? What part um, of Dubai is this? We didn't go to this uh, part. And AP was asked to leave the hotel, and hotel employees claimed that they received multiple complaints about AB smoking marijuana in his room and violating the country's dress code. Apparently, he was walking around without a shirt. <sighs> <sighs> I mean, more bizarre behavior, like we yeah. said. Look, man, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. What, it's Steve? a beautiful country. Yeah, they have some rules, and culturally, you just have to respect them. Mm-hmm. But if you if if you do that, and if they want to, I'm um, trust me, man. They'll turn you around at that immigration desk. They'll they'll red flag your passport. They're not doing that, man. They're not going to make you make their tourist guests feel uncomfortable because you don't know how to act. Mm-hmm. And man, you really not gonna go over there and disrespect women. That's not what you're not gonna do. Mm-hmm. Come over there, for waving your thing. Okay, partner. I'm telling you right he now, dog. His whole way, bro. Bro, listen sure. to me, man. Yeah. It's some men and some fathers over there mm-hmm. that ain't they not having that. Wow. But that That's was a good a while thing. Ago. That's a good thing. But yeah, wasn't this back a in while May. Ago? Yeah, it happened back in not, May. That well, yeah, the video is just October. not perfect. We know he, he, can't can't go go back. Back. he can't go back. He can't go back. I love it. Yeah, he can't go back. Yeah, in October. don't be over there messing it up for us. We like Dubai. We love <laughs> it over there. All right, uh, moving on to Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah is leaving The Daily Show after seven years. He's been there for seven years. He made the announcement during a taping last week. Noah simply stated, uh, "I realize that after seven years, my time is up." That's all he said. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trevor didn't say exactly when he would be leaving. Uh, Comedy Central commented that they are grateful to Trevor for their amazing partnership, and they're excited for the next chapter of The Daily Show. It's no secret that late-night TV show rankings have been shrinking, which caused uh, Conan O'Brien to end his show last year. So um, we'll miss Trevor Noah. He's funny. Well, it's just TV is Mm -hmm. is changing. Changing. Drastic. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, with all the streaming for, and yeah, I mean for Tommy to be on seven years, man, is amazing. Yes, it it's is. Just, yes, it is. It's too many ways for people to view television, and television isn't the only source anymore. That mm-hmm. streaming has changed the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, don't... and we don't have to watch the shows in real time now. Yeah, that's what, that's what I like. Mm-hmm. Is that, is I like the that. issue for late night. Mm-hmm. You like don't it. have to watch of it in course. real time. Mm-hmm. That's okay. That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. And, and that's that's the reality of it and the danger of it. Okay. Mm. 
Dangerous. Why do you say dangerous? Well, because it's late night is time sensitive. Mm -hmm. They're monologues okay. about things that happen today. Topical. Okay. Yeah. Nobody's mm -hmm. gonna want to watch that next week. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the, I do. The, the, yeah. the, the celebrity on the show promoting a movie or a book or something. Right. Well, the movie right. been out two weeks. Nobody wants to watch that. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's harder now. Mm -hmm. it's is, harder. It the, is it uh, the same for daytime as well? All TV has changed uh -huh. mm -hmm. because of streaming. Okay. Like your streaming yeah. numbers is just as important as your viewership number. You know, that's why I like mm -hmm. the New Judge show. It's on ABC, mm -hmm. but we promote it heavily on Hulu. 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 Oh, Hulu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. thing about Hulu is they get your numbers right away. They know oh, who's clicking in. Oh, okay. They okay. know who's clicking in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. All right. Well, we it's wish like Trevor Noah thing. well. Mm -hmm. I love Trevor Noah. We wish, Noah, we I wish do too. you and Uncle Steve well. We're just trying to stay on. What are you talking Absolutely. about? Absolutely. Trevor going to be fine. <laughs> you guys we are doing well. well. <laughs> you guys are doing well. He just said that. Coming up in 20 minutes after, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson begins her new term today as the first black woman to serve in the Supreme yeah. Court. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court, was welcomed on Friday by President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and her colleagues at an investiture ceremony. The proceedings were purely ceremonial since Justice Jackson has been a member of the court since she was sworn in back on June 30th. But the event was nonetheless stately and steeped in history. The Supreme Court opens its new term today, hearing arguments for the first time with new justice Katanji Brown Jackson. Already, the court has said it will decide cases on a range of major issues, including affirmative action, voting rights, and the rights of LGBTQ people. Uh, the justices will add more cases to their docket in coming months. So we got to say congratulations yet again to yes, Justice right. Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman to serve on the Supreme oh, Court. Girl. Yeah. Black girl, let me ask you a question. Black girl, man. Uh -huh. you say one of the things that's on the ticket that they'll be voting for is voting act rights? Yeah, voting rights, affirmative action, uh, and the rights See, of LGBTQ. I mean, do people understand what's going on here? That what? the what Voting mean? Rights Act has to be re-voted on, I think, every 10, 20 years to mm -hmm. see if blacks will still be allowed to vote. So, well, that's one of the things they'll be voting Something on. Something to that effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I but the Voting saying. Rights uh -huh. Act mm -hmm. is about us. Yeah. Yes. And they have yes. to mm -hmm. vote to see if mm -hmm. they will continue that or not. Yeah. That's so th that's all the more reason not to take your, your, your voting Born rights for granted. Your vote USA. for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Born <laughs> in the USA. Yeah. And People that's died why we for this right to vote because now mm -hmm. you think you just vote for the president. Now you see from this last presidential yeah. election, this last president, he put in three Supreme Court justices. So you have to vote in your local election mm -hmm. so you know who these judges are when they get promoted. You you yep. have to be familiar that's with why, stuff and vote all the time. That's and why you the can't gentleman, take that right for granted. Mm -hmm. That's Go why ahead. the gentleman that called in on the uh, email. Uh, the uh, phone Our voicemail. Line. Our yeah, voicemail. Y'all uh -huh. make me sick. Y'all racist. You sitting up in here talking about black Republicans. That's why I have a problem. Because if you want to be a black Republican, know what the Republicans stand for and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now if you want to be a black Republican, that's fine. But know their policy and their facts. Right. Right. And right. black people, we cannot afford to vote those of who, who oh, us who are well off, we cannot vote for just us because it 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 doesn't include the masses. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mm -hmm. wish that That's true. America was privy to what well off people really think and feel. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 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 shocking, man. Yeah. But it's consistent. Though. Well, <laughs> yeah, it hasn't changed <laughs> much in all these years. All right, we're going to switch gears here because coming up, 
Uh, Roscoe, ladies and gentlemen, is in the building. Uh-huh. Man, come on. Yeah. yeah. He right here. Come on. We'll hear from him right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he is here. Roscoe, friend of the morning show. <laughs> Roscoe is here. You know what, Jalen? Soon they, soon, they, soon they say me, I come right on in. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't wait on I don't need no intro. Ain't no music. What well, what music they gonna play for me? I wrote all of it. They don't use it right now. What's going on? What, what, what you want to know? Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on, Tommy? What's up, Roscoe? How you feel, man? I heard you were down a little bit, man. God is good, ain't it? God is good. I'm back up, yeah, Roscoe. I'm man. coming strong. Yeah, your boy coming strong, boy. You're going to be all right. Hey, if you want to use my boy, let me know. <laughs> 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 what is that, you lady? Hey, what's up, Julia? What's up, Roscoe, my hero? Boy, I heard you married now, player. Yes, sir. I'm out, I'm out of man. I'm married now, man. I'm oh, good. man. Wrote a song about it. You did? Uh-oh. It's all over. <laughs> oh, it's just <the> beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's, funny. that's just funny to me. I don't, yeah. I don't do that little funny. <laughs> hey, what's up, Carly? Hey, Roscoe, what's happening? What's going on with Shirley? What's happening? What's up? Hey, what's Roscoe up? again. Hey, hey, listen, Roscoe. Hey, who the girl in the corner with the big forehead? Anyway, yeah. okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. that's Mississippi Monica. Okay, hey, money. <laughs> go ahead. What, what, All right, Roscoe, I wanted to ask you this. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've heard yet, but uh, Rihanna, hell. yeah, Rihanna <laughs> is uh, scheduled yeah. to headline oh, the uh, hell, Super yeah. Bowl halftime show this year yeah. or next uh-huh. year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know all about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, everybody's excited. Well, you know, I'm excited too. You know, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, she's fine. Just had mm-hmm. that baby. You know, yeah. she's a little thick right now, but that's how I like it. I like the new Rihanna. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you have you, <laughs> have you have you ever been asked to uh, perform at the Super Bowl? Because we're all excited about Rihanna. Well, you know, uh, I too. feel I feel like I get asked every year. And how do you feel? What do you like mean? Because you what know, you mean, whoever performs, hell, they owe me. You know, ain't nobody over there, ain't, 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 ain't nobody over there performing. They ain't got a song I wrote. <laughs> you know what so, we talking about? So like last year, you, last year, last uh-huh. year at the Super Bowl. Yeah, let's go yeah. over that. Dr. I'm with Dre, Dr. Dre, Dr. Mary Dre, J. Dre Eminem, Fifty mm-hmm. Cent, Mary uh-huh. J. Blige, Snoop, Snoop, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. What? What are you talking about? What, what do you mean? What? 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 what are you what? saying, Roscoe? All of them, uh, all them songs. You remember when Kendrick Lamar put that crown on his head? Uh-huh. Uh, where you think he got that from? Oh. <laughs> well, you keep he asking got that questions. idea from Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay, man. Yeah. He had a little crown on his head. I was reading the Bible to him one day. Uh-huh. And he said, you, oh, look at him. Wait a minute. Oh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, you were uh-uh. reading, you, Roscoe, were reading the Bible to Kendrick Lamar. Oh, man, let me tell you that- something. Uh-huh. I, I introduce these people all kinds of stuff. I do. I'm, I'm well. You you got to know I know the Lord. How I write all these songs without the Lord? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. How mm-hmm. can you be this talented? Uh-huh. This so, much guilt in yeah, one uh-huh. body if it wasn't put there by the good Lord? <laughs> Come Amen on here, Roscoe. Okay, Roscoe. Amen to that. So are you expecting to hear from Rihanna as far oh, as advice I don't know. or something oh, for, well, for her halftime performance? Well, I'm going to go through her daddy. Her daddy? Who, who's yeah. her daddy? What's his name? Piano. Piano, piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, piano know. man. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, piano man. Billy Joe. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hear from her daddy. And then I'll tell her what she's going to say. I'll let her use a couple of my own. You know, oh, I'm going to sign them off for the OK. Oh. You know, everything oh. is going to be real good. You know, she's going to be gonna fine wait? as hell. Are you going to be no, there in Arizona? No, no. You're not going to oh, watch your no. artists before? Oh, no. I don't go to Arizona too hot. <laughs> well, it's in February. It is rather warm, yeah. But you know, I got a curl, you know, and they don't sell activator in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> it can't it's going to dry out. Yeah, anyway, you, here, you know, I can still go to Atlanta, Brunswick, <laughs> Miami. You know, New York. They still got an old case of activator somewhere in there. But you go to Arizona. <laughs> It ain't a bottle of Proline in that damn thing. 
<laughs> All right, Roscoe, thank you. Coming up next, the nephew and today's prank Don't you phone leave, call. Baby, I love you. Hey, hey, time to get, get, get healed, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Did he say pro man. line? Love you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is, he compliments everyone but me. What? All right, we'll find out what that's all about in just a few. Yeah, wrong move. All right, but right now, the nephew is here. Hey, nephew, with today's prank phone call. (laughs) What you got for us, Nev? I'm in the building, girl. Do you 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 hear me talking? Do you (laughs) hear me talking? Do you huh? hear me smiling because you're Do you talking? hear me smiling? Yes. Lord have mercy, I'm here. Mm-hmm. So happy. Oh, I feel got? I feel like C. Lee. I may be black. I may even be ugly. But thank God, I'm here. Come on, C. Lee. Yes. <laughs> Stupid is back. Stupid is back. All right, I got one for you. This one is here. This one here is one of your twins is mine. One of your huh? twins. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Surely it's possible, okay? Yeah, we yeah. found out. We yeah. found out recently, yeah. Recently yes. it just happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. last you know month in Brazil. Yeah, last month, yeah. And that, woman... see what that means? What does that tell you? Tommy is ahead of his time. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Tommy. Okay. <You're> doing a <laughs> prank call ripped from the headlines like Law yeah. and <laughs> Yes. Yes. Dead One of your t- twins <laughs> is mine. Cat dog, if you would. Hello. Uh, I'm trying to reach Tony. Yeah, this is Tony. Tony, what's going on, man? My, hey, brother, my name is Kendrick, man. I'm trying to reach out to you. You, um, are you, are you the Tony that used to used to date? Man, <laughs> yeah. What about it, man? I was trying to reach out to you. Um, who you say this is again? My name Kendrick. Kendrick. I, I, I got, I got, I got a little problem, bro. Hopefully, we can work this out. Oh, man, look, man, I, I ain't got nothing to do with no damn no more, man. That's the past, dog. So I ain't. Don't even call me about her, man. That just you know, I don't want to hear. Uh, do do you and do you and um you and do y'all have kids together? What? Do y'all have do y'all have, do y'all have children together? Y- yeah, I got kids from Cuba. Man, how you get my number, man? Say again. How you get my number? Hey, bro, I, I ain't trying to have no beef with you, man. It ain't it ain't nothing like that. I'm just y'all. Do y'all do you and have a set of twins? Yeah, man, we got a set of twins, man. But wait a minute, hold on, dog. Why are you calling me, man? Whatever you and did, man, that's you and dog. But what you asking me about my my kids for, man? Okay, bro, here, here's, I mean, I don't even know how to break this on you, but I'm just going to just put it out there, okay? Just and just hear me out, man. Just hear me out. Um, it's been brought to my attention that there is a strong possibility that one of the twins is mine. Oh, are you crazy them Man, who you say you is again, man? This Kendrick, hey, man, man. Man, look, man, don't call my house with this. Man, how how a twin gonna be yours, man? They my twins, man. Hey, man, I I, I found out, and I, I thought I, I thought the same thing you thought, Tony. I was like, okay, man, that that's, ain't even biologically possible, and man. That's you what I thought, that? but I found out that two seeds could actually join together. Yeah. Create twins, and each one of them could have a different daddy. I'm finding this out for the first for first hand myself. Oh man, you ain't fine, man. Look, man, whatever, man. I'm telling you, dog, man. The the, the, the kids is mine, man. Hey, 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 you ain't got nothing to do with this, dog. You ain't got nothing to do with this, man. Hey, listen, man. All I'm trying to do is get to the bottom of something. Let me, let me, let me, let me, man, Tony, look, dog. Man, me out and listen to me. Let me ask you this: Your set of twins are they? Are they? I mean, are they the same shade of color? Are they different shades? I mean, I'm just asking. I've never man, seen them. Man, they- man, look, dog. Let me tell you something, man. I want you to get this through your head right now, man. Whatever you and got, that's on y'all, man. This ain't got nothing to do with my twins, man. Ain't got nothing to do with my twins, man. One of them dark skin, one of them light skin, man. See, right there. Right there, man. What? Right there, what? Okay, Tony. All right, let me ask you. What, what, what shade of color are you? Are you dark skin or light skin? Man, I'm dark skin, man. man I'm light skin. Wait, man, I'm telling you, the light skin I'm... twin must be mine. You know what, man? I'm not going to even continue this conversation no <laughs> more. I- I'm going to just tell you something, dog. You don't know who you with, because I will you up. You understand that, dog? Man, listen, I just found out that this this is a fluke accident that is possible to happen. Oh, 
You understand that you talk about my kids, man. I understand about my that, man, and I understand the passion that you have for your children, man. I'm man, just no, trying you to tell you one of the kids man, ain't you call yours, my Tony. House talking about my kids is yours, man. One of the twins is mine, man. Man, ain't no. Man, look, man, look, dog. I tell you what, man. I'm gonna let your make it, dog. You know what? Cause don't call here no more, man. Whatever you and were doing, that's what you and that crazy is doing. So she with your old crazy stupid. You stupid enough to call here talking about one of the kids. You, I guess she told you that stupid. Huh? Now, uh, uh-uh, dog. Don't call me no more, man. Okay, don't. okay, Tony. Listen, will you will you consider? I mean, I got us an appointment tomorrow at the doctor. Would you consider bringing the kids and we can see which one is yours and which one is mine? you are retarded, man. That's what's up with you, dog. You retarded, man. I I ain't meet you no well, dog. That's what I'm talking about, man. I tell you what, dog. I'll meet you man to man, man. Man to man. Me and you, dog. Man to man. I'm going to kick your So We ain't got to fight. Tony, I just want you to give me my child, man. I'm going to give you a whooping. I got my Louisville slugger. You stupid That's what you is, man. You an ignorant man calling me Sunday morning talking about my kids. It's your kids. Man, you, you retarded. That that can't even happen, man. I understand it, man, but it's a fluke accident, and now you're trying to deprive me of me of having a relationship with my child. Man, I've been raising these kids for five years by my damn self, man. I get them up. I take them to ballet, man. I take them to Little League. You understand me, man? Don't, don't call me no more, man. Tony, I understand, and dog, it was heartbreaking to me too, Tony. Tell you what, man, I'm gonna get off the phone, and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want you, man, I want you to never, ever call my. Uh, don't call me with no ignorant like this. What you say your name is? What, 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 what's your name again, dog? Hey, man, hey, man, my name, Ken, my name Kendrick. Man, listen, listen, Tony. I'm gonna find your dog. You understand that, dog? We gonna settle this with your. You understand you. With, dog. Okay, but, but, but Tony, I got one more thing I want to say to you, okay? Man, you ain't got shit else to say to me, man. Tony, let me say one more thing to you, man. Man, okay, man. Hold on. Now, baby. Now, baby, daddy, all right. <laughs> yeah, y'all gonna play. I'll be, I'll be out there in a minute. Man, see, dog? Oh, man, you didn't got everybody around here all Man, I don't curse like this around my kids, man. Okay, man, can I say one more thing to you, man? All right, man, say what the f- you want to say. And don't call here no more, man. Tony. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy. Oh man, you know what, Tommy man, man, that's some <laughs> up. <laughs> boy, boy, man, you know what, dog, man, you was really about to get your <laughs> to it, man. How, man, you can't be <laughs> with nobody about their kids nowadays, dog. <laughs> man, oh man, okay, okay, you, you got right, me, man. man. That. All right, all right. Tell you what, man. Don't 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 even tell you did it, man. Cause see, we meet we meeting later tonight. I got something for you, man. <laughs> hey, 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 nephew Tommy. Uh, do, do me one favor, man. What's that? Watch the ten o'clock news tonight, man. You go what? Monkey on there, man. Watch, dog. <laughs> I can't believe this, man. Oh man. Uh, all right. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. I gotta ask you, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Oh, man, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. I listen every morning, man. I just can't believe y'all got me, man. (laughs) I don't think, I really don't think nobody out there is as ignorant and stupid as I am. One of your Uh, queens. Hey, look, you're hmm? right about that. I'm in total agreement with you. As you should. As Mm -hmm. you should. No one is as stupid as you. No one. (laughs) <laughs> mm. And mm-hmm. stupid is getting ready to grab that microphone once again. You going back yes. out? Go you going back out? <laughs> November, I'm grabbing the mic. Uh-huh. November, okay. I am okay. grabbing the microphone. All stand right. by. That's I let you know month. what city. I ain't gonna let you know right now. But stand by. The nephew is coming. Tell but but here's, a, here's, here's a hint though, Carla. What? It's in the low country. Oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Low country. They it's in the you. low country. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, nephew. Thank you. Up next, it's the strawberry letter. The subject is he compliments everyone but me. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click Submit 
strawberry letter and we could be reading your letter live on the air just like we're going to read this one right here right now and you never know it could be yours Mm -hmm. buckle up and hold on tight we got it before you here it is strawberry letter okay thank you (laughs) (laughs) sexy nephew subject he compliments everyone but me Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm 58 and on my second marriage to a man that I only knew seven months before we got married. He swept me off my feet after I met him at church. We actually met online, but we agreed to have our first face-to-face encounter at church. We spent that entire first day together and into the night. He said he was an expert on beautiful souls, and mine was the brightest he'd seen in years. Now that I look back at our first date, he did not say I was beautiful or even comment on my outfit. We had a lot of laughs, and although we didn't have a lot in common, we built a sweet relationship. I think back now to when we first had sex. He didn't compliment me then or have much to say about it. I noticed that he complimented other women a lot. Right before our wedding, when he met two of my girlfriends, he said my friends are beautiful and he cannot believe the cutest one is still single. I was jealous, but I did not mention it to him. Instead, I kept an eye on my girlfriend like she was the problem. Now I know he's the problem. He has a bad habit of pointing out women at church or on TV that he thinks are beautiful. Um, I asked him if I'm beautiful to him, and he said it's not becoming to seek out compliments. They have to come naturally. He must think I'm very unattractive for him to answer like that. Just yesterday, he told a cashier that her nails were cute, and I felt some kind of way because he told me he is not a fan of long nails. It is hurtful to me that he never has anything nice to say about me. How do I get him to notice me? Well, it's not that he doesn't notice you. He notices you all right. Uh, I I do think it's very odd when a man doesn't compliment his wife, uh, when he never says anything. According to this letter, he doesn't. Uh, I I think that's kind of mean, you know, uh, and dumb. Uh, It's like he knows you look good, but he's too something, I don't know, fill in the blank. To, to do it. It will cost him nothing to say it, but he just refuses to do it. And, and it's definitely in him because, you know, he knows, he notices other women. So it's in him. He, he, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I, I wonder what he does behind your back when he's around other women, uh, because he's disrespectful in your face and it makes you feel some kind of way. That's why I say it's mean, him not complimenting you. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's perfectly normal from a woman to want to hear something nice about herself from her own husband. It won't kill him to say, baby, you look good in that dress, or I like your hair, etc. cetera. Uh, it'll work out well for him later. Uh, I think he's an idiot. I think he's has some control issues as far as you're concerned, because he's aware of what you want and absolutely refuses to give it to you. So I say is just stop expecting compliments from him. Uh, it's more important how you feel about yourself anyway. How do you feel about yourself? Do you think you're beautiful? I say get dressed up, go out with your girls, have some fun, quit depending on him to validate you. Get your confidence up on your own, okay, without him. Uh, you know, stop looking for him to make you happy or make you feel good. He's not going to do it. That way he can keep you just where he wants you. What did you like about him anyway? I mean, really, what did you like about him, Steve? Like? Yeah. But why did she marry him? Yeah. What did you like about him? <laughs> why are y'all married? <laughs> how you didn't marry a man that, What? how? I don't oh, even no. understand that. Let me just walk you through this. The subject is he compliments everybody but me. I'm 58 on my second marriage to a man I only knew seven months before we got married. So that means you didn't know him. Right. He swept me off my feet after I met him at church. Uh, everybody meet at church is, uh, is sweet, sweet people off their feet. But then he'll go to correction. Well, we actually met online. Mm. But we agreed to share our first date face-to-face encounter at church. We spent the entire first day together and into the night. He said he was an expert on beautiful souls, and mine was the brightest he'd seen in years. 
Who say that? <laughs> he, him. Who, who, without mentioning how fine you are, mm-hmm. without mentioning none of that, he went straight past your looks to you one of the most beautiful souls and mine is the brightest he's seen in years. Oh, that was breathtaking to you. You thought that was the line of lines, didn't you? Now that I look back at our first date, he didn't say I was beautiful or even comment on my outfit. Well, let's talk about that. (laughs) Why would a man not tell you you beautiful? Well, I can think of one reason. And then he didn't even comment on my outfit. Now, let's talk about that. What did you have on? <laughs> <laughs> now, you don't want this damn church dress up in here because y'all first date was at the church. He didn't comment on your outfit. What church outfit did you have on? You 58. Are you on the missionary board? Or are you on the usher board? See, what outfit did you have on? Then let me throw this one out real quick. Now, nah, I can't. I'll be back. I'm going to just right, tell Steve. you what's happening. Hang on. Uh, We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, he compliments everyone but me. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. Uh, The subject is he compliments everyone but me. The question in this letter is why are y'all married? Hmm. I haven't heard one redeeming thing that you should even be, why did you marry him? Why, listen to me, 58, second marriage, you only you married a man you only knew seven months. That means you got married to a man you didn't really know. He swept me off to our feet after I met him at church. That's a lie, because you said, well, we actually met online, but we agreed to have our first face-to-face at church. We spent the entire first day together and into the night. He said, I was an ex he, he was an expert on beautiful souls, and mine was the brightest he'd seen in years. I don't know who say that <laughs> without doing some basic compliments first, but mm-hmm. obviously he liked poetry, and you do too, so you fell for it. Now that I look back at our first date, he did not say I was beautiful or even comment on my outfit. Well, why would a man not say you beautiful? when he first see you. I can think of one main reason. Let's mm-hmm. count. 1,001, 1,002. <laughs> there 1, you go. 1,004, 1,005. <laughs> Maybe he didn't say you beautiful cause he didn't see that. But he saw your beautiful soul though. <laughs> and he's an expert. Then you said he didn't say I was beautiful or even comment on my outfit. Uh Oh, here we go. What Mm. did you wear to church to meet him? Which one of them moo-moo-ass dresses did you have on? Not the moo-moo, Steve. What unflattering, crazy-ass church outfit (laughs) did you have on on your first date at church? Come on. No wonder he said you was a beautiful soul. He couldn't see nothing else. <laughs> We've had a lot of laughs, and although we don't have a lot in common, we built a sweet relationship. Here go the next line. I think back now to when we first had sex. He didn't compliment me then or have much to say about it. Well, we done went over this with your outfit. We, I asked you in the outfit, what did you have on? Now he didn't compliment you or mention your sex. What did you do? (laughs) What was you in there doing that didn't get a girl? Ooh, that beautiful soul show showed up. (laughs) Girl, I didn't know under that church outfit what you was working with. You didn't hear none of that? Mm. No, because you was up there and it wasn't worth mentioning. I noticed that he compliments other women a lot. Like right before our wedding when we met, here we go now, two of my girlfriends. He met two of my girlfriends. He said, my friends are beautiful and he cannot believe the cutest one is still single. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. He said, your girlfriends are beautiful. He never called you that because you know what the statistic is now. 
one out of every three people is ugly. <laughs> if two of your girlfriends is beautiful. One, wait, 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 wait. One out of what? One out three. of every three people is ugly, Tommy. One out of three. <laughs> That's a fact. See, like if you look at this show, <laughs> like if you look at this show, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, it's go one out of. Yeah. See, it's still, it's still Monica, Shirley, me, one out of three is ugly. <laughs> me, you, Junior. <laughs> You can pick any one of them. <laughs> and, and be right. <laughs> and, and be dead on. And be spot on. It's me, Tommy, and See. Junior. That's yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. And then, well, we know it ain't Carla, so where we at? <laughs> <laughs> we back to the two ugly ass dudes. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, Thank Lord. You. And now, and now, she, he said, my friends are beautiful, and he can't believe the cutest one is still single. But guess what? You getting married. The cutest one is still single. But the reason you're all right with him is because you're the best he can get. Because ain't nobody else taking this conversation. And ain't nobody else marrying this non-complimentary right. ass man but That's you. Right. So you're the best one he can get. So jackpot, you win. I was jealous, but I didn't mention it to him. Instead, I kept an eye on my girlfriend. Like she was the problem. Now I know he's the problem. He has a bad habit of pointing out women at church or on TV that he thinks are beautiful. I asked him if he thinks I'm beautiful to him, and he said it's not becoming to seek out compliments. This is what he meant to say. I asked him if I'm beautiful to him, and he said it's not becoming to seek out complimentary compliments when you're not beautiful. Mm-hmm. They have to come naturally, and your beauty is not natural. That's what he really said. That's he right. must think I'm very unattractive. There you wow. go. Now nah, we wow. get into what this. He must think I'm very unattractive. Bingo, you could have wrote that at the top of the letter. It's hurtful to me that he never has anything nice to say about me. Once mm-hmm. again, why did you marry him? How do yeah. I get him to notice me? He has <laughs> noticed you. Yeah, he has he, noticed he, you. And he's, he's told you. you everything he's noticed. Keep on I asking him to notice you. You finna find out some more stuff about yourself, too. <laughs> He don't like your toes either. Hit us up on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM to comment on today's Strawberry Letter. Ask him about that old ass hairstyle you got on. See how he feel about that. You can also check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next to the Sports Talk with Junior (laughs) right after this. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, guys, it is time. Junior is here. Sports Talk. What happened? What happened to games yesterday? We spoke. Man, uh-huh. week four was comebacks and interceptions all Sunday. That's all this was. I'm uh-huh. going to tell you right now, let's get to it. Chargers over the Texans. It was never close. 34 picked to it. 24. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly picked it. Yeah, everybody, everybody, I don't know nobody picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I picked it too. Huh? Giants over the Bears, 20 to 12. Picked then it. We, wow. Cardinals over the Panthers, 26 to 16. Picked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, here's a shocker, though, man. The Raiders beat the Broncos 32 to 23. Uh, picked it. You did? You didn't pick Russell? He ain't picked no, it. No, no. I did. No, I did yeah. pick it, man, because Russell's struggling over it. They don't have the right offense in place for him. Okay. Oh, well, what man. about this one, Unc? Man, this was a close game. Ended in overtime. The Packers over the Patriots 27 to 24. Hell, yeah, you know, I don't never pick the Patriots. <laughs> I know you'll never pick them. I just wanted Everything you to say that. Everything in me can't stand both. <laughs> yeah. Here go a great game, man. This one, man, uh, shocked me, man. But the Chiefs over the Buccaneers, 41 to 31. Pick that. Ooh, this. Mahomes Bank over. Brady's Brady, butt. Man. Mm-hmm. He, gonna probably, he, gonna, he probably not coming back next season after that one. I'm, I'm pretty sure he threw. Seahawks over the Lions, man, 48 to 45. That hurt. God, though. That one, I yeah. picked that one. I always picked Detroit. Falcons over the Browns, 23 to 20. You know something, man? I'm <laughs> really just thinking about What's going this. on in Cleveland, man? <laughs> uh, waiting on the massage therapist to come. <laughs> <laughs> Check back in December, Steve, when yeah, you come yeah, to work. Yeah, yeah, get back with me in December. Wait, here we go. Titans over the Colts, 24 to 17. I picked it. Oh, man. This gets on my nerves, man. The Cowboys beat the Commanders 25 to 10. Yeah, now he's talking about Cowboys oh, going to the Super Bowl. One. Yeah, Ooh. Cooper Rush, three straight wins. Now they're going to the Super Bowl. Wait a minute. They're going to the what? Super Bowl. Cooper Cowboy? Rush, what? man. They, Cowboy fans talking about they're going to the Super Bowl, what? man. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, Cleveland ain't going. With Dak. Yeah. Houston not going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Y'all not going. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, man. Dallas ain't getting past Philly. Say yeah. what is what I said. <laughs> Philly on the comeback, 29 to 21 over the Jaguars. That happened for sure. <laughs> Jalen Hurts, man, showing Picked out. It. <laughs> and the Vikings <clears throat> over the Saints in London, man, 28 oh. to 25. Sorry, Tosh. I ain't picked That's that That's it one. for sports, man. <laughs> so, so Philly is the only undefeated team? Yeah, they the only one. Philly, Jalen Hurt, the Q. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I thank you. The quarterback is a bro. I got 500 on the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, wow. All man. right, co- Coming up at the top of the hour, is it necessary for your partner to know every detail of your past? No. It would be a hell no. It would be a hell no. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, this is from Tay at SteveHarveyFM.com. And I'm not sure if Tay is a man or a woman, but Tay wrote, I'm divorced. And my new partner keeps asking me specific details about my ex and my marriage. So my question is, is it necessary to know everything about your partner's previous relationship? Should I be open and honest about everything? Hmm. Boy. Tay, we don't know if it's a boy or girl. I don't care who it is. (laughs) Hey, Tay. What have I told y'all? Just a unisex answer. Yeah. Honesty Everybody is not gets always the best policy. True. Yeah. The only thing you should be saying about your ex, it was a mistake. Mm-hmm. It was a bad decision. It was a bad relationship. I found something that's the direct opposite, and I'm so happy now. That's mm-hmm. it. Okay. Go up talking about your past. You I need can't. to know how to lie. You got to get to lying about this. Listen to me. I cannot mention 98% of my <laughs> 98? No, that's can, right. The only can thing I can tr- the only thing I can tell a woman honestly <laughs> is what I did from age 4 <laughs> to about were, nine, about to about 17. After that I was in college teen. and I can't uh-huh. repeat nothing after that. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> So just two no. percent is all she gets. As far I can as give you from goes. four to seventeen pure honesty. Wow! Okay. After okay. I went to college, uh-huh. I uh-huh. cannot divulge this <laughs> part of my life. Yeah. So, but but her partner ke- or his partner keeps asking wow. them specific details. Ain't no problem about their ex. Okay. And Shirley, marriage. Ask me a question. Let me show you how to handle. You a woman? Uh, you asking a man? I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. So, how many uh, how many times have you been married? Oh, twice. That's true. Twice. And why why did you break up? Uh, what happened? You know, it was my fault. It was my fault. The first one, and then the second one, was just horrible decision on my part. And how many how many women um, really have you slept with? Mm. Do you there think? You know what? Mm. I don't even that 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 that, that thing like that don't even cross my mind because. I don't even count my mm-hmm. youth and the things, the mistakes I've made in my life, man. I've learned so many oh, things boy. about, well, about my well, past, man. Speaking of counting, can you count them on, let's say, one hand or two hands? The amount well, of I women can't count them on one been? hand. Uh huh. But I don't. I, I don't need a whole lot of fingers. Well, you oh, need more yeah. than ten. Is you, that what yeah. you're saying? Two hands. Yeah. You need more than. Yeah, well, I'm not going to need, you know. Uh-huh. Honestly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if we, 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 we wasn't on. Yeah, I want you to be honest, yes. I, I, I'm just trying to get to know you. Probably, man, yeah. like. Go ahead. I could probably count them on two hands. Mm-hmm. So you've been with, like, at least ten women. Minimum. Maximum. Don't say minimum. It's minimum, maximum. maximum. Don't tell me that you know, what word. You know, it just depends on how you want to look at it. Minimum, <laughs> maximum. Uh huh. You know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, how long, like in a rela- how long does your relationships do your relationships normally last? If you've been with them. Oh well, that depends. You know, if it's a one nighter, then that's what they that's where they got the term from. What one night one night stands? How many yeah, one night had, stands have you one. had? Just one night. And you've been with ten mm-hmm. women, so the other had, women were a re- in a relationship. You were in a relationship with them. The other nine. Full blown. Then, yeah. 
Why are we oh, being no. interrogated Maybe like eight. this? <laughs> yeah, no, you can ask me all you want to. We ain't coming yeah. with this number. <laughs> you can turn it around. Cause, stick, stick it to cause, it. Because truth be told, we can use everybody's fingers on this damn show. <laughs> if you want to. I, I, I can put a digit on every thing on this damn show in real life. But what we ain't, we ain't finna do that. Uh, yeah, we ain't going uh, past 10. <laughs> no. But don't, don't 10. you think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So no honesty is what you're telling Tay. <laughs> Keep it down. Keep it down. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, this seems like a weekly occurrence uh, when we talk about uh, Mr. Nick Cannon. Uh, Nick Cannon and uh, Brittany Bell have welcomed their third baby together. Congratulations to Nick Cannon. This What's the total now for Nick? Didn't you just child. say this the other day? Yeah, this yeah, that was nine. the same girl as the other day? That was another, another baby. This is, yeah, this is a Wait woman. Wait a minute, this um, is another one? Like weeks apart? Yeah. yeah, this is a woman that already had twins by him. And now she had a third baby by him. And so now, altogether, he's had ten children. Ten. He need a hysterectomy. He he do. He read. He do. <laughs> That's for women. <laughs> he do. All he right. need a hysterectomy. Well, let me tell you the, the he, baby's he, he, name. He. The baby's name is Rise Messiah Cannon. Uh, Rise Messiah was born on September twenty third, weighing a whopping ten pounds. And then Nick posted another blessing. As my journey on this planet becomes more and more remarkable and unfathomable, uh, I can all I can do is thank God and continue to ask the Most High to order my steps. He has given me stewardship and dominion over a family dynamic to some is unimaginable. So, <laughs> anybody. Yes. They're going to start using numbers. You looking at a man <laughs> with steps. Me I'm 12, telling you right 10. now. Why you think they had the TV show out called Eight Is Enough? <laughs> <laughs> and that was blended. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> Order All your right. steps to Walgreens. That's what you need to do. <laughs> Coming yeah. up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 33 minutes after. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for a round of Would You Rather, guys. Would you rather? No cell phone for a whole month or no sex for a whole month. I, I need that. I need that phone. I'm sorry. We, we, yeah, I got I need that phone. phone. Yeah. What? Yeah, okay, so you're going to go. We, no can make, we, we can make each other feel good if we both got that phone. We, you know what I'm saying? We can, we can make it through for a month with that phone. What? Come on, boy. <laughs> what? Yeah. Man, send me a picture of your show. Man, something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I can't do without this phone. I can't, I can't mess my money up. No. Okay. Junior, you, Mr. Newly, uh, two I week disagree. into it. I can agree. I, ain't got my, I just threw my phone when you said it. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're going to get Because you're sex. a newlywed. What? You got it? Tired now. Uh, exhausted. Uh, You're exhausted. Uh, just two weeks <laughs> in, Junior. Yeah. What? I can't believe you right. said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep with that same thing. Would you rather give your wife your password or Me. would you rather eat eat canned meat? Canned meat for a full year. Eat it for a year, putting all kind of seasoning oh, on that no. canned meat. You hear me? I'm going to give it. Well, no, man. Mine got my password. Tommy, you just Hello, got my out kids the hospital. Got my oh, yeah. And if and if I give her this phone, I'm going back to the hospital. <laughs> so I'm not doing a damn thing. <laughs> so canned meat it is. Canned <laughs> meat. Tuna. All Vienna that. Sausages. Yeah. Spam. All that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. All right. All right. So um, okay. Would you rather have a flat stomach and short legs? Or would you rather have a pot belly and <laughs> long legs? Well, I might as well go with what I got now. Uh, what is that? <laughs> pot belly and long legs. <laughs> <laughs> but you rich, though, so you feel yeah. yeah, no matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that ain't really no pot belly. I've renamed it. What, what is what it? What? That, that area is entitled, it's called income. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, Junior's very quiet because yes. he's all of the above. 
everything. <laughs> I was going to say, Uncle, you might want to take the He pot got belly short legs short and legs. a pot belly. <laughs> give, me, give me one from A and B. <laughs> and, he ain't got his, and he ain't got his headset on today, so we looking at his headsets and hairs at the same spot. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm closer to the Tommy, other one. Yeah. Flat, flat stomach, short legs. I'm right in there. Yeah, what? and I'm who there. wants to be short? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I go from 6'2 down to 5'9"? Why <laughs> would I want to leave this glorious view of life I've had to come down there and now I got tippy toe? I can't get a plate out the cabinet. I'm in here trying to jump. I'm in here trying to jump, get the pickles off the top shelf of the refrigerator. <laughs> that concludes oh, today's man. round of Would yeah. You Rather. I'm in here we'll sitting on phone books trying to drive a pickup truck. We're not fit to do this here. <laughs> no. We'll be back for our last break of the day and to close oh, out man. the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, before we get out of here, we do want to remind you of ways to help out the victims of Hurricane Ian. You can donate at 800 Red Cross. That's 800 733 2767. Or you can go to redcross.org to donate. If you'd like to volunteer, you can go to the Red Cross's website at redcross.org slash volunteer today. Okay, if you can help out, please do. And of course, um, we're still praying for the victims of Hurricane Ian. And uh, Carla, yes. in honor of October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you were in Chicago this weekend. We saw you on yes. the gram participating in the annual Sister Strut event. Tell us about it. You were dancing, getting your groove on, and it was for, of course, a worthy cause. Yes. How was Sister it? Sister Strut, it was wonderful. Chicago, first of all, shout out to Chicago iconic weather it was a mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful day beautiful saturday in chicago mm -hmm. and our loyal listeners from v103 i uh, yeah. mean they showed up and showed out we were at the uh salvation army the croc center on the south side and oh mm -hmm. joe soto oh, Steve. my job <laughs> yes joe soto was there he told me to give you lots of love and tommy so many well wishes from our chicago listeners they all were stopping me on the walk telling thank you telling me to tell you they love you praying for you prayer of healing so we got a lot thank of love you. in chicago they say hey shirley girl home girl <laughs> hey, hey junior some thank of them you, were shocked Ju and you junior. know tommy i want to say that i'm a little uh Oh, they were shocked at Junior's wedding? Yeah, they were asking me. <laughs> Steve, they were asking me not. Tell me about Junior. Junior they got married. I said, yes, Junior's yeah, he, married. Yes. We were all Steve. in shock. Yes, yes. So Junior's need up. love, too. <laughs> Go to my Instagram page at Lips by Carla. You can see a whole review and good time mm -hmm. we had at Sister Strut right. Breast Cancer Awareness. And if you want to learn more, go to sisterstrut.com or v103.com. Any packed. of our iHeart yeah. affiliates. It was packed. It was nice. Mm -hmm. So there you yeah. go. All right, Steve, you want to take us home with um, some closing no, words? We're talking. <laughs> oh, are you good? <laughs> you know, Shirley, hear what you're not going to do. You're not going to arrange the last break as you want it and then just make <laughs> Wait a me minute, a little throw-in segment. <laughs> you know, That's I thought we were going to talk to Carl about her weekend. And yeah, we did. Did you not? Were you not then listening? you want to just throw me a bone at the end, do something at the end. <laughs> Go ahead and take us home with you. No. <laughs> I want to talk to Tommy because I've Ooh, never been attitude. in this position before. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, What's up, for all everybody out there that stopped me to ask me how Tommy doing, he's mm. at work. He's yeah. fine. Right. Can y'all tell everybody that? Stop asking me. Am I okay? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? what is the asking me about him? Attitude. You know, y'all get tired when people come up. Y'all talking about, can you get this to your uncle Steve? Can you do this? Stop asking me about Tommy. Tommy is fine. He at work. I'm here. Is there anything let me, let me we say, need let me, to do? You don't know him. Let me say this, huh? <laughs> let me say this. They feel like after they we do. get after after we get off the radio, I am quiet the rest of the day, so I can try to yes. get this voice back to to 100. percent So please, for the people that's trying to call, I'm not gonna take the call. I love you and I appreciate you. For the people that I have taken your call, you do not know what to say 
to a person that just came out of what don't call me and say what are they you saying? know what my auntie had that she died though hey that's not a <laughs> yeah that ain't, i don't want to hear that Yes, I didn't Shirley. say that to him. That's exactly what you said <laughs> to him, Shirley. I have not spoken to Tommy on the phone. We Shirley, had... you said it on a commercial break. You well, sure did, Shirley. Know that, Steve. You sure did. But Shirley. just stop doing that, Shirley. <laughs> well, he didn't Everybody say Everybody don't want to know how many people else. you know had it and died. <laughs> he is he didn't healed. Say me. <laughs> I'm telling you, he talking about you. He is not. <laughs> and stop trying to encourage a person by mentioning death. You know, most people die. Well, that's exactly. Not. Yeah, that's not that encouraging. That's not that encouraging. Me speaking about. <laughs> you know, he's that'd here, be like, like Junior. Said, that'd be like talking to Junior and saying, well, at least you had a small crisis. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell is a small crisis? Uh, it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you know the difference between a big one. <laughs> I done talked to this boy before. He went in the middle of one. It ain't pretty. No. So stop no, asking me about Tommy. Tommy is fine. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Then I'm I had this one old ass lady. Where you be at when they asking you about Tommy? But, but hold up, though, man. Here was one lady. I don't know where she got this from. Uh -huh. Lord, I don't know what y'all would do without him. What? <laughs> Whoa. I'm what dead? are you talking about? See, he wasn't talking about me. I told you. You know, lady, what are you talking about? You know. I never said that. You know, you know, you know, and then here goes you something know. Shirley would say. Well, you know, he was such a big part of the <laughs> The key word was. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's sitting right there. <laughs> Thirty, you gotta admit you have you have called some people off before they left here. You called her a faucet <laughs> off before she left here. Oh, Who man. else was it? Uh, Valerie well, Harper. Did. Valerie yeah. Harper. Rhoda. Oh. Rhoda. Rhoda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two people. <laughs> <laughs> you're here though, like Steve said, you're at work. You're fine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank the Lord. This has been the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> we hope you have had moments of levity. We did very little to inform you today, but that's just fine. <laughs> Listen, tomorrow we may get to that. Have yourself a wonderful day. Talk to God. He would absolutely love to hear from you. So honor him, praise him, but most of all, thank him. See you tomorrow. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 